On today's video, we're gonna show you how we move the pigs and why we're moving the pigs. If you look from last, last video that we did, we had the pigs in their training area that allows them time to learn about the electric fence and to stay away from it. So in here, you can see the grass that was in here is sufficiently eaten down and trampled in. So we really wanna get them on fresh grass before they completely destroy this area. So what we're gonna do is show you how we set that up to get them on the grass. So what we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna start by mowing the lines, which gives a, which cuts the grass down so the wires stay out the grass, and it sets the pigs up. We don't wanna set them up for failure, we wanna set them up for success. So what that's gonna do is allow them space to be able to see the wire before they run into it. So we're gonna mow that down real quick and show you how we set up our step stakes. So what we're gonna do is use our mower right now to mow the lines where we're gonna put the wire. And that includes the inside hard, uh, the inside high tensile line and the outside high tensile line plus where we're gonna put the step stakes. So use the tools that you have. I already have this mower, so that's what I'm gonna use. You can use a string trimmer or do it by hand if that's all you have and keep it cheap. I had one question from last week about the fence. I ran through it a little bit a little bit fast from the last video. So since we're running pigs, our bottom wires are a little bit tighter than what you might have if you're running sheep or, or cattle. So the spacing for the bottom three, the first one is six inches off the ground, the next one is six inches more, so it's 12 inches, and the top one is six inches on top of that, making it 18 inches. The next wire is at 30 inches, so there's a foot space, and then another foot for the top one at, at 42 inches. So you can go more if you have bigger animals, maybe horses you need higher, but so your spacing is gonna be dependent on the kind of animals that you have. The other thing that we have that we discussed in the last video is we have dedicated power, and the reason that we did that is because with the pigs, it's suggested that you have a, a fairly high jewel rating for your fence charger. With this fence, the overall area is 200 by 300, and we have what's what's claimed as a 120 mile fence charger or it's 6.7 joules so you really don't look at the miles look at the joule rating it's 6.7 joules so we're just going to test our fence real quick to make sure we're hot and you can see with this ken cove digital reader that we're showing 7.2 that's kilovolts so it's 7200 volts that this this fence is hitting at right now so with most solar chargers you're unable from my understanding to get that high of voltage out of a dedicated solar charger so we had line power so we can plug it in and get that high of a hit because if you touch this fence like i made the mistake of doing it's going to put you on your butt right now what we're going to do is put in our step stakes we are setting them up um to allow the pigs to get access to the bigger part of the pasture. What we're gonna end up doing here is laying our step stakes from this corner fen fence post we have here to our bigger gate and down the field here a little bit. And what, we will re what we'll do for this first time is completely remove the gate that will allow them access to the grass and they'll be able to use their shelter at night or during the day if they wanna catch a little bit of shade. In the future, we'll, when we move them, we'll use their, their mobile shelter. But for right now, they're used to being in here for right now so we're going to allow them a little more time in there but allow them access to this fresh grass so right now we're going to put the rest of these stakes in um, i'm running trying to get a fairly straight line in here we're going to use maybe a few more of these than what we're than what's really necessary but you know kind of the more the merrier in my opinion you don't want the wire dragging on the grass and, and grounding out and everything so we're using some of these posts that we got from tractor supply uh, this ground is a little bit hard and i just found out the hard way that they're not that durable so um, you might want to upgrade to some of the, the metal posts that you know they're going to last a little bit longer we have our first line of stepping stakes in place so what we're going to do is we're using our reels here uh, i like these ones they're a geared reel that i ordered from ken cove i got two different styles the first time these ones are fairly expensive i think they were in like the 60 dollar range 60 to 70 dollars when i ordered them the other ones i have are non-geared and they don't have as nice of a handle and they're, they're just a little bit cheaper so i ended up ordering more of the better geared ones so get what you can afford but sometimes it, it pays to get some of the, the nicer stuff so these are just so much nicer to reel up they're geared so every time you turn it it's pulling in like i think it's a three to one gear ratio so you, while, while we're pulling the wire out you can see we have it just hooked on our fence over here um, that's the non-conductive handle so we have that loop through our our cattle panel there and you flip this bale up to keep it so it free spools so we're just going to run this across and we're running this 
we're gonna end up running two wires. The first one's gonna be on the bottom, the bottom hook of our step-in post. Sometimes you're a little tighter than, one's tighter than the other. It's just get in place the best you can. All right, and be careful at the, at the end of the fence here. So we're gonna flip our bale back over. This, so now when we reel it, it's gonna hold tight. So we're just gonna get, actually I'm gonna hook, get this hooked up. And as you reel it with that bale tight, it's gonna allow you to pull some of the, the slack out of the line. So that's as tight as we're gonna get it there. So you can see we got our bottom wire set. So we're gonna run through and get our, get our second line set and I'll show you how uh, we get the, these lines charged up from the, our, our outer fence. All right, we have our two wires set up on our step stakes with our reels. I like using the two wires, depending on the height or the spacing of your step-in stakes. You can get away with one with the size that they are. I just like visually, they can see it a little bit better, I feel like. So we're gonna show you how, how these reels work. So you can see I'm using our tester and I'm showing we don't have any, any voltage going through here. So we're gonna show again on our, our outside wire, 7.3. So the way these reels work, they come with these jumpers. So you set the, you wind the wire up as a jumper, you have to buy, I believe these are a separate purchase. I don't know why, because they're required. You got these alligator clips, you set it up on the outside and then you just clip it on any of the other wires that you have that are hot. So we're gonna set both, these, both of these up. We're just gonna pinch on, be careful there, you don't touch the wire. We're gonna pinch on to our hot wire, which is gonna electrify, just be mindful, not only is it gonna do the wire that you have set up, it's electrifying this whole spool. So if you touch this, it's, it's, it's gonna be hot. So we showed before that we had nothing going on. Now that you see, it's showing that same 7.3 that we, that we showed on our hard wire. We're gonna test the top. We're hot on the top too, so now, both of these are electrified. We're gonna set up our other side, then we're gonna get this gate off here and let the pigs eat some grass. Good. All right, we have our second line set in place, our step six again. You can see where we mowed the grass. Again, the way we're, why we're doing that, obviously we don't want the grass touching the wire and grounding it out. Plus, that gives a little buffer that the pigs, as they exit that tall grass, you can see that grass is well over their heads. I mean, it's gotta be almost three feet high now. So when they come to the edge, they're gonna be able to see the wire. So. We're just, we're again, every time we move these, we're gonna, we're gonna test the wire to make sure it's hot. So we're gonna make sure our jumpers are good. Everything looks fine. These are both hot. So now we can go ahead and take the gate off of that training area and get the pigs out here. I didn't feed them this morning, so they're a little bit hungry. That way I can kind of coax them out with some of their food and they're gonna be able to find this fresh grass as well. All right, as you can see, these pigs are real happy to get on the grass, they're eating the grass. A lot of people that may be familiar with people raising pigs, they question whether or not the pigs will actually eat the grass. As you can full well see right now, they are as happy as can be getting on this fresh grass. They will eat this stuff down all day long until we move them to get fresh grass, they can eat some more. So when people say that pigs won't eat the grass, you can see they're just dead wrong. They haven't tried, most people don't give them the space to be able to eat the grass. It does take more money to set up the fencing, so it's more infrastructure. You need a much bigger area. A lot of people set it up just like in our training area. It doesn't take, the, it wouldn't take that much to set that up. And heck, you wouldn't even need the electrified fence around the bottom if you don't want to. But this way, so it takes, it's more time, more money, 
But at the end of the day, you can see the grass we have built up over the last couple of years. So we're building the soil and I think that we're getting a superior product at the end of the day when these pigs go to butcher. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. We got them moved. Just keep an eye out for the next videos. We're going to show how the pigs progress. You can see how, how much bigger they're getting, what it's going to do to the soil and the ground as they move. You can see how we, uh, we move them in the future. Um, I want to give a shout out and thanks to my friend uh, Aaron and Aaron over at Pape Family Pastures. They're two of the people that really helped help us get started with the concept they're the only ones that i knew of locally that were doing this so they helped us out along the way even with the spacing for the fence and how to set things up so i want to thank them and i also want to thank billy bond from uh, perma pastures farm their youtube videos have been really helpful billy his wife and their son really do a great job in their videos showing the different things that they're doing on on, on their farm they also have a podcast the permaculture pimp cast where permaculture is his passion so the pimp is permaculture is my passion for billy they answer questions they talk about different subjects that relate to things like this um, they even answered my question last week about some mulching that we're doing so stay tuned we got a few more videos coming with uh, some of the other things that we're working on on our farm thanks for watching